Welcome back to my elementary music lesson plan volume three. And this episode is where I am sharing all of my lesson plans for the week for grades K through five. I do also teach six three at musical theater, but I'm not going to share that just because that's just not what I want to share on here. This is mostly for elementary music, but I'm going to be sharing all of my lesson ideas for the week so that you can see like how I sequence my stuff throughout the year, especially being at a new school where kids are a little behind. So that's where we're at. And so if you're new here, my name's Brandy Barton. Like I said, I'm an elementary music teacher and middle school musical theater teacher in Central Florida. And I made this channel to help instill a love and appreciate, help you instill a love and appreciation of music into the hearts of all of your children through lesson tips, strategies, tips, tricks, all of those sorts of things. And so if you're interested in that, make sure to like, subscribe, and share to this channel. Um, we are starting to grow fast and rapidly, and I'm super excited about that. And we have some really great videos coming along the pipe. So definitely stick around for that. We are on volume three, which means that I have talked about my lessons for the last two weeks. I skipped last week because it was kind of the same stuff as the second week because I got really behind. Like I planned way more than I thought we were gonna get to. And so I didn't feel like sharing those same lessons twice. So today we are on a new set of lesson rotations and we're gonna talk through what I'm doing with my class. As far as what their learning targets are for October, um, kindergarten and first are really focusing on steady beat and I'm also gonna start to be doing fast and slow with them. Second is working on soul me, hopefully soul me law. Uh, third is still working on ostinato and then fourth and fifth are finishing their units on meter and we're getting really thick into the composition part of that project but those are their learning targets. So from here, I'm just gonna share from kindergarten up what I am teaching for this week. Also, if you were here in future other videos, then you know that I was trying to figure out how to possibly use my happy planner for my lesson planning and I couldn't figure it out and finally figured out a system. So I have post-it notes at the top of each of these rows to use for like kinder through fifth. And then up here, I have it color coded like Monday's a color, Tuesday, all of that. And so I will just put the name of the class or actually I'll put day one and then day two here. And then the name of the class with little check boxes, but I can check what they got to and I'll write it all out. And so I have all of this here <laughs> and all of this on the other side. And I even have an extra lot box section to do to do's and all of that. Like I have assessments on here that I need to start doing. I have some calculations down here that I was doing for something, um, all of that sort of stuff. So I'm actually really excited <clears throat> that I figured out how to do this. <laughs> Plus it leaves on here what I'm teaching. So this is going to be really easy to tell you right now. Okay. So Let's start with kinder slash first grade, which if you are new here as well, then I am teaching the same exact thing to kinder and first for most of this year because I'm at my new school and so I just want to catch the kindergartners up to speed and it'll be easy to like get past the stuff with them quicker than it will for kinder. So I do my warm up. Like I said, I'm not going to share this warm up. It's like I do vocal exercises, we do stretching, we do breathing exercises, we do melodic and rhythmic patterns. I have a whole warm up video. I will always share that down below so that you can just watch that to your heart's content. But then we do one of the vocal exploration pictures. So I have this nice picture of cowboy, a cowboy and his name's Cowboy Joe. And it's this nice big picture. And on the back, it says a story. I will link those, uh, exploration stories down below in case you want to buy them but this one specifically is about a cowboy that wants to try out his cowboy call and herd all of the cattle and so every time it says he said his cowboy call the kids have to go yeah and so they do this nice vocal exploration and so I read the story in Spanish or not in Spanish in my southern accent and I'm going and all the cows were in the field really had his cowboy call yeah Ah, and the kids think it's hilarious. They have a lot of fun with it. And at the end, he says, now he's on to bigger and better things. He's trying his elephant call. And they're all like, mm, like an elephant and it's super, super cute. So I like to do different exploration activities with them just to get their voices moving. And so that's a good one. And then after that, we do this song called Bunny Hop. I got this from Eileen Miracle um, from Miss Miracle's Music Room a couple years back. I love this activity. It's on piano and it's super cute and we do it all the time. Basically, she just tells a story about bunnies and like plays the piano to like 
do the story. So she'll be like, once upon a time, there were a bunch of bunnies and they love to hop around. And then she's playing this cute little piano pattern while they're hopping all around. And then she'll say, they wiggle their noses and she'll play keys at the top of the piano. And they wiggle their tails and she'll play at the bottom of the piano and she'll keep switching back and forth. I think it's hilarious. They keep bouncing around. They switch between like hopping and wiggling their noses and their tails. And then she's like, and then they needed to dig up some food and they dig up spaghetti and meatballs, right? And the kids are like, no. I'm like, oh, okay, apples. And you keep going and finally you're like, oh, they dug up carrots. And then she just plays all the way up the piano on the white keys. And then she's like, okay, so now they eat the carrots. And then she goes up the piano on the black keys. And then to finish, they hop around a little more, they wiggle their noses, wiggle their tails, and then they start to go to sleep and she plays the black keys really, really slowly until she gets all the way to the bottom and they are dead asleep and they're not allowed to wake up until the number three. And so I'll like skip around and go one, two, five, 13, 84, 92, three, and then they hop back to their spot. I've done this two weeks in a row. The kids absolutely love it. I will try and find where I got that from her. I believe it's in her first weekday of school lesson plans. I will link that somewhere. It might also be on her blog. So I'll find it and I'll link it down underneath. Then we're doing Christmas show tunes. So my school always does a school wide K through five musical, but this year we are doing a school wide three through 10 musical and K through two is having their own show. And so I was letting them listen to their songs today. So I'm doing, since I'm at a Christian school, we're doing one Jesus song, one cute song, and then they're all singing Silent Night together, K through two. And so for kindergarten, their fun song is Gingerbread Cookies by Music K8. I love that song. And then their Jesus song is Hallelujah, He is Born. And it's also from Music K8. And then for first grade, I, they're doing Blitzen's Boogie. Oh my gosh, I love Blitzen. It's such a cute music K8 song. And then their song is, what is their song? Joy to the World, but a Celtic version. It's super awesome. So we listened to that and we started to learn that today. Um, and then we do going to the farm and listen to the pigs. So that is that game plan K through five unit that I was talking about. We are on our fifth out of six animal. Uh, and so we used wood blocks for that one for this week. And so they just learn about the pigs. They have to play on all the oink, oink, oinks. Um, and it's super, super cute, which that song just goes, listen to the pigs go oink, oink, oink. Listen to the pigs go oink, oink, oink. All day long they sing their song. Listen to the pigs go oink, oink, oink. And they just get to do that. And then they rotate and give it to the next person who is their piggy partner, which they thought was hilarious. So that's what we do for that. Then we do this fun little finger play called This Little Pig, which is also from Game Plan, and Hop on One Foot, which is also from Game Plan, and I'm not going to explain those in depth just to like keep the integrity of the Game Plan book, but they both just go along with that unit. And then we finish with the book Piggies, which Piggies, um, is, I'll show on the screen, it's just basically like they had two fat little piggies, two smart little piggies, two long little piggies, two silly little piggies, and two wee little piggies. And sometimes the piggies are hot and they have to show being hot with their hands. And sometimes they're cold, sometimes they're clean, sometimes they're dirty, sometimes they're good, but not at bedtime. And then they do all this funny stuff. I'll read the book the first time and then I'll have them do the fingers with me the second time. And then that is typically where we run out of time for day one of kinder and first grade. It's only day one. Oh my gosh, I've been talking forever. We're gonna whiz through day two. Okay, we're gonna whiz through the rest of this super fast for K through one because I'm going way too slow. So day two, since I see them two times a week, we walk in, they're gonna be doing a uh, freeze dance to Thriller, the instrumental version. And then we're gonna be doing whale sounds with our whale puppet for our vocal exploration for the day. And then we're doing our welcome activity is Beat Buddies. So they used stuffed animals to uh, keep the beat all over different parts of their body. And we're gonna do it to the Monster Mash because that's one of my favorite ones to do it to. And then we're gonna be doing some Christmas show practice. So they're gonna be practicing their songs because we need to make sure they know them for the show. And then we're doing one of my new activities with a book called Frank was a monster who loved to dance. I'm gonna read the story to the students and then they will be doing a freeze dance, but they're going to have to look at my different flashcards that I have um, in order to know how to move. Like maybe it says walk like a mummy, uh, scare like a vampire, dance like a skeleton. And so they get to have all different fun doing that sort of moves throughout my classroom. And then after we've done Frank with the Monster We Love to Dance, which I do have a lesson plan for that, so I will link that down below. I have an entire five books for Halloween uh, activities that I have, and that is one of them, so I'll link that down below. 
And then we're doing Good King Leopold, which I've talked about the last two weeks and we hadn't gotten to it yet, but that one is just the one that goes like where all the kids are on one side of the room, the king or queen is sitting in their chair and they're like, oh, King Leopold, may we cross your kingdom? And then the king says, you must ask again, this time use your whisper voice. And then they'd have to go, And so it's a four voices review. We're wrapping that up this week. I think they have a really good handle on it. And then every so often the king will say, yes, you can cross and then, but you have to hop or yes, you can cross, but you have to skip. And then I'm playing the drum while they're doing that part. And then the last thing we're doing is our four voices final assessment. So I have a four voices posters worksheet or posters set with worksheets that I will link down below. I'll put a picture of the worksheet up here and what I do with the worksheet is I will sing four different songs that we've done this year using different voices and they have to circle the person whose voice they think it matches. And it's a real easy assessment for me to make sure that they know how to recognize the four voices. And so it's super, super simple. But that's all we're doing for the second day of K through one. So for second grade, <laughs> They lesson plans were a little sporadic this week. <clears throat> I feel like some weeks I'm on top of it with lesson planning and some weeks I'm not, but it's okay. Okay, so we started <clears throat> with them doing, listening to their Christmas tunes first, just to get that out of the way. And so for them, they are doing Este es la Navidad. I always like to do a different language for second grade for Christmas shows. And so they're doing it in Spanish. And then their uh, Jesus song is called Shalom. It's a partner song. So they sing one part and then the second part. And then one class sings one part and one class sings the other part together. And I think it's actually really beautiful because our word for the year is Shalom. And like we're asking each other, how is your Shalom? And so I think it's going to be the perfect tie-in for the end of the concert. It's going to be good. So we're listening to their Christmas tunes. And then after that, we were doing an assessment on Ta and TT, or actually Ta, TT, and Rest using paper plate rhythms. That also is from Aileen Miracle. I don't know what lesson pack. It's in a bunch of hers. But what you do is you have the kids in a circle and you have a paper plate in front of each of them um, and they're upside down, these paper plates, in case they're colorful. And the first time, you just have the students practice getting four beats to move from their plate to the plate in front of them. And you practice that a couple of times because kids are gonna skip plates, kids are not gonna move in time. So you have to really practice that and make sure that they are consistent at moving from one plate to the next, to the next, to the next, every four beats. Then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna add them saying patterns. So they'll go, ta, ta, ti, ti, ta. Ti, ti, rest, ti, ti, rest. Ta, ti, ti, ta, ta. And so they practice making up their own pattern at each plate. Then you finally flip one plate over, and this is over like two class periods. You flip one plate over, and maybe it's a red plate, and you say, this is the special plate. When you land at the special plate, you have to say a rhythm all by yourself. And they're like, oh, and there's a rubric for this. Like they, you can get out of four points, and like you lose points if you get there and you do this. Ta, ta, and you take forever. You lose points if it's too long, like ta, ta, ti, ti, ta, ti, ti, ta, ta. You get points wrong if you say it wrong, of course, like ta, ti, ti, ta, ti, ti, ta. You know, like if you say it wrong. And you also lose points if you, what was it? If you don't say anything, if you do that, if you do this. Um, I feel like there's one more thing that you lose points for. Oh, it has to have a certain type of note in it. And so for this one, I told them it had to have a rest in it because we've been focusing on quarter rest. And so they had to include a rest in their pattern. If they didn't, they got one point off. And so I give them two chances to do it. So we go through the entire circle two whole times. I film it so that I can grade it for later and then I delete it. And the kids think it's hilarious, especially because when it's on there on the screen, they have to go like, you know, because like they're just silly. Um, but yeah, it was actually, it actually went really well. And so I have to, finish grading that today so I can delete that and then we move on from there. And we are reviewing Bee Bee Bumblebee with my stuffed animal Bernie the Bee because I wanted to go over Soul Me in that because that song is all Soul Me. And so we practiced singing it with our hands on our shoulders and legs going Bee Bee Bumblebee so that they're able to practice that. And then I didn't want to pull out the xylophones because it takes a while. So I pulled out boom whackers and I had them take turns doing the different back and forth for the two colors and I had it on the screen so that they could tell when to play each color and they could actually hear them playing the two notes that they were just singing to show that there are two notes and they're, you know, back and forth. And we have not shown them on the staff yet. We haven't introduced them as Soul and Me yet. I'm solely getting them used to like hearing those two notes go together. 
We also did some beat charts. So we practiced tracking the beat by pointing to the bees with our fingers just to make sure that we are working on that steady beat. And that was for day one. And then day two, we started with When Step Met Skip. This book I was actually gifted for free from my friend Vicki Weber, and I will link her down below. She has tons of music storybooks. She has one coming out for Christmas called like Gingerbread Snaps or something, but it's a vocal exploration book, and I'm very excited to read it. But it's the cutest little book about this guy named Step and this girl named Skip, and how Step wants Skip to Step, and Skip wants Step to Skip all around the staff and of course they don't want to do what they don't want to do and then by the end of it they are making beautiful music all together with her skipping and him stepping it is the cutest little book to introduce step and skip and so i did this with the kids so this is like a great precursor to soul and me and then they had to fill out this worksheet and so all they had to do was if it was a skip they colored the notes pink like skip and if it was a step they colored the notes blue like a uh, step and this person got all of them right, so this was a good example. <laughs> um, but they got it all right, and so that way they are practicing. And there were some kids that could not understand what that meant. They were like, they all look the same. And so then I had to really focus and spend time with them on that. But for the most part, the kids really got it. And so if they're starting to get this, then I know when we get to Soul and Me, they'll understand. And I'll be like, they are a skip apart from each other. And it'll be a really great segue into that. So now this book... I got from my friend Vicky. This is a free worksheet I got from my friend Gina over at Music Plus Coffee, I believe. I'll link it down below so that you can get this for your class as well. And then the last thing we did in there is Vamos a la Mar. I'm doing that with second grade. We've talked about it before, so I'll briefly explain it, but it goes, Vamos a la Mar, tum tum, a comer pescado, tum tum, poca colorada, tum tum. And so on the tum tums, they shake, shake. So it's um, they're egg shakers. So they're going, Vamos a la mar, tum tum, a comer pescado, tum tum. And so they're doing that. And then I have an interactive rhythm game that's practicing quarter rest with them, where there's a bunch of animals on the screen. And whenever they click on an animal, a rhythm comes up and they have to practice it and get it right before they can move on to the next animal. And we're going to use that as a form. So to segue into that, uh, my friend also actually released Vamos a la Mara the same week, Becca, and she has a version in hers where she has them walking around the room and doing a movement activity going, we're going to the ocean to see an octopus or something like that. And so I'm going to have the kids do that, but with our uh, interactive rhythm thing. So that'll be on the board. We'll sing the song and then I'll pick a kid and they'll go, we're going to the ocean to see a crab. And I click on the crab picture. They read the crab pattern, and then we go, Vamos a la mar, dum, dum. And we sing the song again, and then another kid picks, maybe they pick a dolphin, maybe they pick a shark, maybe they pick a jellyfish. And so it's like A, B, A, they sing the song, they do the pattern part, they sing the song, they do the pattern part, and I think that'll be really good. Um, but I got that part of that idea from the lesson from my friend Becca from her Vamos a la mar video. So I'm really excited to see how that'll work in here in my classroom. But that's what we're doing for second grade. So now we're moving on to third grade. So for third grade on day one, I start, actually, this is hard because I have two different classes. So I see one class twice a week and one class once a week. And the class that I see once a week is way more behind because we've missed a couple Mondays together. And so they are still working on the thing from last lessons where I talked about teaching them what an ostinato is and then doing ding dong, digga digga dong, and adding the book Bad Kitty to that. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, Go check out my volume two episode of uh, elementary music lessons, but I'm just going to focus on the other group. So for day one, we review the book Aliens Are Coming, which I'm going to go get it. If you didn't know by now, I love adding books to music. This is here. It's actually called Here Come the Aliens Now, and Artie Almeida taught this in a lesson forever ago, and I'm obsessed with it. It's the funniest book. It's just all about aliens, and it says the aliens are coming a lot. And at the end of every time it says, here come the, al or the aliens are coming, you sing this song. Tell the people far and wide, all across the countryside, tell them quickly, get inside, aliens are coming. And you sing that every single time it says aliens are coming. And so by the end of the song, or end of the book, the kids all know the song. Sorry, I'm panting because I ran over there. <laughs> the kids all know the song, and so they sing it with me. So then you can play it on xylophones with them and I write down the notes on the board because it's just three notes. So we do the rhythm patterns first. So we go And then 
I add the notes because it's only D, F, A for the beginning. And then it's G, F, E, D, or A, G, F, E, D, D. So it goes like this. D, 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 F, 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 A, 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 G, F, E, D, D. And I have them practicing going while I'm on my xylophone, practicing on their laps, going alternating with their fingers. D, 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 F, 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 A, 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 G, F, E, D, D. And so they practice that a couple times. I let them practice on their own on the xylophones. And then we play it. And they're actually playing the entire song while they're singing. And we add that to the book the second time going, um, you know, the aliens are coming. And so that entire thing took the whole 30 minutes. Uh, one, because we had to pass out xylophones. Two, because that class sometimes comes late. Three, because we did our warm up and that took two or three minutes. And, you know, clean up and break down and like all of that. And so that honestly took all of day one. And then the second day, what we did was we started with Tidio and we did the folk dance. So if you've never heard of Tidio, it goes like this. Pass one window, Tidio. Pass two windows, Tidio. Pass three windows, Tidio. Jingle at the window, Tidio. Tidio, Tidio. Jingle at the window, Tidio. Tidio, Tidio. Jingle at the window, Tidio. And so <clears throat> the way we do it is it is a folk dance. And there's two circles. You have your partners facing towards each other. And so it's an inside circle and an outside circle. And so on all the pass one windows, they pass the, the outside circle. Outside circle moves to the left one. So pass one window, tidy -o. And every time they say tidy -o, they have to go pat, clap, pat their partner. So they're doing that to new people every time. So it's pass one window, tidy -o. Pass one window, tidy -o. Pass one window, tidy -o. And then jingle at the window. You switch places with your partner in the circle. So you're on the inside and you're on the outside now. So it's jingle at the window, tidy -o. Tidy -o, tidy -o. Jingle at the window, tidy -o. Tidy -o, tidy -o. Jingle at the window, tidy -o. And so that's a really fun game for the kids to do. They're changing partners constantly. They're doing pat claps, all of that. The reason we're doing that is because I'm reviewing... Um, mi re do at the end with tidy yo because we're focusing on mi re do just because we are behind and that's easier to do with older beginners and so we're reviewing with tidy yo and then i'm doing the same paper plate rhythm thing that i am doing in second grade and third grade just to review we've been reviewing quarter rest as well we're about to do half note with them and speed through that and get to take a tiga um 16th notes so i don't have to spend a lot of time on that but i wanted to make sure that they had their ta rest down as well or quarter rest and so we did the same paper plate rhythm thing that i just explained with second grade and so that's the exact same i'm doing a couple of things that are the same with them and then they are about to be starting instrument families but before we do that we are also doing the same vamos a la mar activity so i never ended up getting to vamos a la mar the other time when i introduced it i got to zapatito blanco with second grade or third grade which they loved oh my gosh they were asking to play that game again today and they were all saying zapatito blanco zapatito azul dime cuantos años tienes tu and i was so very proud of them because they all remembered it but we finished with the vamos a la mar interactive rhythm game the same exact thing that i did with the other group okay and then we're on to fourth and fifth and so the last thing that we do, which they are, one of my classes is behind the other because of the same thing with Mondays, but they were just doing the human bar lines thing that I talked about last time, as we are still reviewing meter. And so by this point, the kids know it's organizing your beats. They know what meter of two, three, four, they have a really good sense of like how to do it. And so today was more focusing on like the composition side of it. So we started with this other game, which like I said, all of these meter activities I got from my friend Jess over at Music and Motivate, her meter unit is probably one of the favorite things I've ever bought on TBT. So this one was Bar Lines Battle. And so what it was is I believe I have the papers back here. Let me see. Yeah, I do. Okay. So the kids would have a sheet in front of them that looks like this. And so it'd be two teams racing against each other and they have the same paper in front of them. And then they have popsicle sticks. So then their team member says, on your mark, get set, go. And they are racing to put the popsicle sticks in the right places where the bar lines go. So this is a meter of three. So they have to put it every three beats. When they're done, they say time. They also have to put two popsicle sticks at the end for the double bar line. And then they have their answer key, which is right here. 
with the bar lines already noted and so one team member checks the answer key and if they get it right first and they got it correct then they get a point for their team and so they're doing this in small groups of four and they're just battling each other all over the place and it was really great assessment for me to see like who clearly understands meter and who doesn't and of course i think the kids that understand math more are just more inclined to this like it's not exactly math but it kind of is because you have to like understand also the difference between like which ones get one beat but make more than one sound and like all of that so that was super fun. They really loved that. And then we did this thing called Meter Meals, which she had this PowerPoint where it had a waiter with a time signature and then three different meals that she could eat and it's or to serve. And it said, which one is the customer waiting on? And they had to see the time signature and match it to the corresponding meter or measures and so my kids whizzed through that pretty easily there was like six examples and we practiced that together first because after that they're starting to prepare for their final meter assessment which is going to be them composing their own piece of music and then performing it for the class and so today what we did was they got different little papers which i have as well let me grab okay so she gives you all these papers and you cut these out, of course. And so they have each of the time signatures and then they have like uh, quarter notes, 16th notes, eighth notes, uh, rests, quarter rests, and half note. And so what they do is they have this whole little packet in front of them. And I would say a time signature, like maybe I say meter two of four, so a meter of two. And they have to compose their own pattern using a meter of two. So they'll put the two guy in front and then they'll make their own patterns. They have popsicle sticks again. They make their own pattern, they raise their hand, I come over and check, make sure they got it right, and we keep going. And this is also a really easy way for me to assess because there are some students that just did not understand where the popsicle sticks went at all. And then there were some that it was like, as soon as I said it, they immediately did it and they were really proud of themselves. And there were some that wanted to use every single thing on the paper and some of them they were like nope I'm doing one and like that's the bare minimum and so it was just interesting to see and so we did that with two four three four 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 and then I had them pick their favorite for me to look at and the reason they're practicing this first is if they can do this the next week for their final assessment they're going to get a piece of paper and they're going to write out their own composition and then they're going to get an unpitched percussion instrument and they're going to perform it for the class and that will truly let me know whether they understand meter or not and i think it's actually going to segue perfectly into them composing a larger piece of music that my friend rachel has a composition project on i'll link hers down below but i think this will segue perfectly into that because they'll already understand meter and everything but the kids have really been loving this i'm excited to see what compositions they come up with in the following week and then i am adding a meter mini quiz to that she doesn't have one but i want to make sure they really understand meter and so i'm just going to do a little quiz as well so their final assessment will be the quiz and the composition and i think it's going to be really awesome that's what i'm doing with fourth and fifth that concludes this episode of lessons i hope that was really helpful and that you're able to figure out what you're going to be doing in your classroom if you have any questions about any of the things i mentioned please like comment down below i will make sure to share it with you um, but I'm really excited to do this set of lessons and then I've got to get started for the next week. Next week is a little crazy and different because I have a sub on Monday because I have a wedding that I'm going to this weekend. So I'm super excited for that. I'm not excited for the drive to the seven hours back home, but it's okay. Uh, but yeah, so if you have any questions, link them down below. If I forget something to share, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you're teaching this week, what your learning targets are, what you're doing, all that fun stuff. And I will see you guys in the next video, which is on Monday. And it'll be all about my favorite Halloween lessons for the music room. All right, guys. Bye.